Welcome to another episode of our Stocks to Watch series, where we bring you insights from business leaders to help you make informed investment decisions. I am your business analyst and host, Munir Barazi. Today, I'm speaking with Chris Frostad, who leads PurePoint Uranium, an exploration company that is operating in one of the best regions in the world for uranium exploration, the Athabasca Basin. PurePoint is publicly traded on the TSX Venture Exchange as PTU and on the OTCQB as PTUUF. Hello, Chris. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, Manir. Good to be back. You're welcome. So we want to delve in depth into your exploration process in Saskatchewan, where you are currently exploring for uranium. Small amounts of this element can offer significant amounts of energy. So let's go back to basics. In exploration, high grade is paramount and often determines the economics of a project. How do you define high grade in the context of uranium exploration and what grade have you discovered so far on your projects? Well, um, uranium. Well, I guess Saskatchewan and this area in the north north part of the province of Saskatchewan, Canada, called the Athabasca Basin, is renowned for its grade. Uh, typically, around the world, you are uh, mining uranium at a at grades of below half a percent. Um, you know, if it might be 0.4 percent, and you might have 10 million pounds, something of that ilk, and that that's that's a pretty good uranium mine. In Saskatchewan, it's it's a little bit more freakish in that we've been identifying. I mean, we we identify high grades anything over one percent, and uh, and in Saskatchewan, some of the bigger mines are coming in at twenty percent, um, which is nuts. As a matter of fact, there was a a, a resource estimate that came out just a year or two ago uh, at forty five percent. The entire ore body's grade is 45% U308. Um, so that it, it's it's highly, highly unique in, in that regard. Um, also, it, it's the area is quite prolific. I mean, it, it keeps it keeps coming up with more and more uranium. Over the last 50 years, uh, I think there's about 40, 40 different deposits that have been identified. There's been about 2 billion pounds of uranium uh defined in in northern saskatchewan which is enough to you know run the nuclear uh, reactors on this planet for about 10 years um now 25 of those i would say are are high grade so they are in excess of one percent and if only four of those are in production uh maybe 15 of them have already been mined out so it's uh, there's there's more and more to find, but we keep finding more. Uh, we keep finding new ways to find it, um, to look for it, and uh, and and we we keep keep coming back with home runs. I'd say in the last ten years of that two billion uh, pound number I mentioned, uh, about a quarter of that is. Uh, Am I saying that correct? Yeah, about a quarter of that's been found in the last ten years. So there's the potential for more is 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 uh, staggering. And that's why that's why we work there. Yeah, it seems so. And and the grades you have found seem to be orders of mag magnitude higher than what what you typically uh, find. Right. Um, can can we dive further and discuss the instances of uranium mineralization discovered thus far, and what it really means for the future of your projects? Sure. Well, the um, I mean. Because because uranium is so efficient and because the grades are so high, um, the deposits on mass are rather small. They're maybe about the size of a, a medium sized apartment building, maybe some buried somewhere under the ground. And uh, uh, and as a result, it's 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 they're not easy to find as many of them as there, there might be. As a matter of fact, if you, you can drill a hole as close as 50 meters to one of these things and not pick up any indication that it's there. So it's, it, it's I, I say with a great deal of comfort that uh, probably 80, 90% of the drill holes that occur on the exploration side come up with, with that much uranium. So when you do start to see uranium of any kind, it is it truly is a, a positive indication that you may be getting close to something, and in particular, a mineralization event. So understanding that uranium uh, is mo was mobilized back back in the day um, through a lot of heat and a lot of oxygen and was actually more of a fluid state. Um, you know, you're looking for areas that had that sort of mobile, uh, you know, that mineralization event occurring that, that you might find a, a uranium deposit. And that's the kind of stuff we look for. So, I mean, in our case, uh, in the case of our Red Willow project, we have identified uh, a lot of uranium 
over a broad area of 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 our property which means that you know, we haven't identified a particular deposit or enough of it that would be of a mineable quantity, but we do know that something significant has happened in the area and in the region, and uh, and and that's why we're you know we have a number of other uh, target areas we need to go back to. Um, in on our Hook Lake project, we we in fact did identify a deposit it's referred to as Spitfire. We were hitting grades as high as ten percent, and uh, but. Once we did enough drilling to actually define how big it could potentially be, and we could see that it was maybe 15 to 20 million pounds, which isn't necessarily nothing, but it, it's not big enough for our partners, Cameco and Arano, because they're looking for 100 to 150 million pounds. So, uh, you know, well, that's why we, we we move on from that, that and, uh, you know, maybe we'll get back to it at some point in time. But we know that it's it's not of a size of a tier one project, which is all they can free up budget for. So uh, when we when we do uh, are looking in areas and they are funding these projects it's it's with the knowledge that and the comfort that that they believe that the the potential is there for for that size of a deposit um and we also you know a lot of our projects are are, are neighboring uh large large opportunities uh and and where we see those trends and those geological structures going through our property as well and we have indications through drilling that we do have mineralization in the area um you know we want to get back to those as well one of them is uh, our turner lake project which is right next door to the the resource i mentioned that was a 45 percent so uh those sorts of things are, are promising as well um but as long as you know as uh, as long as we can keep drilling and and keep following up on on these uh things that that uh indicate that we're getting close to something we, we will continue doing that yeah there are many encouraging indicators there and and i believe there is also potential for expansion so so i would like to ask you a bit more about that given what we know up until this point how much potential is there for expansion really on your projects in the athabasca basin especially considering your ambitious exploration program in 2024 well, we've, I mean, we have, we have researched and looked at and drilled and, and done surveys over close to half a million hectares of property over the basin over the last uh, 15 years. And, and the, the issue with that kind of real estate is that it's, it's costly to hold on to. Uh, the the arrangement that we have in Canada and on and Saskatchewan in particular is if you're not working the property, you don't get to hold it. So we have to spend fifteen dollars or uh, say a year per hectare in order to to hold that property. Um, and so during during the time that we've had and looked through all of this property, the objective is really to pull it down as quickly as possible to to where you think the best potential is and 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 that's what we've done so when you talk about expansion it's it's you know where where can we go now within that and we have um you know as i as we go through our various projects to the extent that we have drill tested you know half a dozen or so or more uh uh targets we have dozens more that we haven't touched yet so you know, within Red Willow, say we have you know well over a dozen specific drill areas. They're not just drill hole targets. I mean, these are regions that are that are uh, prospective for a variety of reasons. We've drill tested three of them. We've got another seven or eight to go that uh, that have have a lot of opportunity and promise. Uh, same at Turner Lake. Um, you know, all of our projects have that sort of thing. So, expansion isn't necessarily more real estate it's it's uh you know how have we refined these areas is down to to uh opportunities and we have got dozens and dozens of opportunities to go out there and and open the box up with the drill yeah certainly it seems that you're just on the cusp of of great potential there so let's talk about the life cycle of a uranium exploration program. What are the key stages and how much time and cost does it usually take to find a deposit? Well, I can tell you that in the last 10 years or so, the um, the amount of money spent on any particular project was on average between 10 and 20 million dollars before their discovery of hole, before the first hole 
to actually hit it. So it's not it's not a it's not a cheap endeavor, and uh, and people have to understand that you know if if you're going to eke out into the world and spend a few bucks on a property, I mean that's a hell mary. You're not going to find anything necessarily because they're they're not easy to find, and it has been demonstrated time and time again. You have to have persistence and a lot of money to find it. Uh, what happens is you have to acquire property. Um, you have to do, you typically are doing a lot of uh, field surveys and, uh, and field work and uh, sampling, surface sampling to identify areas. You're looking at historic work that's been done. You're doing a lot of geophysics. Um, you know, you're flying planes and drones over this stuff and sending current into the ground and, and trying to determine what the underlying geology and, and mineralization might look like. Um, and only then do you start poking a hole in the ground because you can't, you don't want to go out to an area that size and just start prospecting with a drill. That's pretty expensive to do. Um, I think the advantage we have right now is that all of our projects have gone through all of those stages and, um, and we're, we're now focused purely on drilling the, uh, you know, a lot of the newcomers to the area and, uh, and there's a lot of, you know, solid teams that are now moving into the area. Now that uranium's uh, back with, with a real, uh, with a real scream. Um, are, are really at those early stages. And I think you're going to be seeing, you know, they have a lot of work to do to get those projects really ready and up to date and 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 ready to start drill testing. So I think we've got a bit of a, a head start on a lot of folks because we've been out there for a while. And uh, and I think we're, you know, we're closer to that that uh, that big discovery than a lot of folks are. Yeah, you seem to be in, in, in the lead and uh the prospects seem very healthy so let's talk a bit about that i know there is a lot of uh elaboration that needs to be done but given what we know so far how healthy do the economics look on your projects up until this point i mean we we have spent considerable time and money on on all of these projects to to boil them down to the prospects that we're, we're looking at the, the money we now have in the bank is adequate to to drill test most of our projects in this coming year and and we're consistently looking for partners as well um you know we there's no reason why we can't uh, bring other people into into the fray um to you know to to work alongside and and to uh, help finance and, and look at these projects there's so much money right now being raised and coming into this area for exploration there will undoubtedly be a discovery or two in the next couple of years there has to be there's just too much money coming into it and uh and and every time somebody else does work beside you, you learn a little bit more about your property as well. So, you know, all of this money coming into Saskatchewan and coming into uranium exploration and and the results being released in a way that that you know, has a lot of visibility is really good for all of us. And uh, and from an economic standpoint, I think that, you know the market is there to support us. Uh, the the uh, the investors are there to uh, to continue financing us. Uh, we know that there is going to we're looking down the pipe of a huge shortage of uranium, and and exploration is the first step in getting more. And uh, so I think you know the, from an economic standpoint, the time is good. Time could not be better uh, for for making that next big discovery. Yeah, and 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 this will become more obvious in the next year, I believe. Um, for investors watching us, why would you encourage them to invest in uranium in general and in pure point uranium in particular today? Yeah, I think I think uh, what we've seen over the last year or two is a lot of resource investors stepping to the sidelines in general. Uh, n a lot of uh, commodities have not done well, and to be honest, on uh, from an, from the equity standpoint, even uranium has not has not seen the same sort of hockey stick that it did 15 years ago when when uranium prices took off. Um, so it's been somewhat muted. Right now, as we come into the coming year, and I don't think anyone's projecting, you know a real turnaround in resources in 2024 necessarily, but I can tell you that, that uranium, uranium is the one exception. Um, I think, I think, uh, you know, the analysts and the, and the market see that, that is the one commodity that, that we are stepping into such a severe shortage of that the, the price cannot, uh, help, but continue to, to, uh, surge the way it has been. And uh, and in that in that regard, I think you know. However, you're investing in the uranium sector, uh, you've got that support to rely on, right? You're not. We're not going. This thing is not going to fall off a cliff in the next year by any means, because there is there is so much general overall market support for nuclear, 
or the fuel that 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 uh, that that runs it that uh, that you you've got that that I guess that that safety net, if you will, from an investment standpoint, that you are you are dealing in a commodity that that is supported. And then, you know, in, in terms of where, you know, how you make that investment, well, you know, there's there's a variety of different ways. I mean, there's it's it's difficult to to invest directly in the commodity price itself. There's a, there's the uh, the spot physical uranium trust, and there, there's a, a few others, Yellow Cake, and a couple of others around the world uh, who are actually buying and holding physical uranium. Um, the producers, you know, if you're getting into a Cameco or, or uh, energy fuels, et cetera, you know, they're, they seem to be doing fairly well as well. And they, they will continue to do well. Uh, the developers, it's going to matter. It's just going to, it's going to be a factor of how, how successful they are in advancing those projects and getting them over the finishing line. And even, even at $90, uh, we're only just starting to get to the point where it, it's economic to start opening up a lot of those, those mines and they can rely on that price to, to uh, put those things into production. And then from on the exploration side, which is typically where a lot of the, the biggest, the biggest gains are made. Um, it's, it's about making a discovery and, you know, who's got the best projects, who's got the most opportunity, who's got the best team in our case, who's got the best partners. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a broad spectrum of, of opportunity there. And I think, uh, I think we're all going to benefit in the coming year, uh, in the uranium space. It is truly an opportunity, and I agree definitely with what you said regarding uh, the fact that there is limited downside potential uh, or risk uh, when it comes to uranium and uranium prices. And also investing in an exploration company like PurePoint uh, exposes you to higher returns. Uh, where there's potential for making uh, 200% uh, or, or even higher uh, upon discovery. So lots of uh, factors really to consider for investors mm -hmm. in, in that domain. Thank you for, for that clarification. Um, Chris Frosted, uh, the CEO and president of Your Point, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, best of luck uh, on your plans in 2024. Thanks a lot, Manir. Good to see you. Good to see you too.